Hello, this is Neil Lipschutz. I'm in Davos, Switzerland, on the outskirts of the World Economic Forum annual meeting. I'm joined by Professor Robert Schiller of Yale University, he of the Case Schiller Index, noted author. Mr. Schiller, thank you for joining us. My, my pleasure, Neil. My first question for you is, what is your short take on the current status of the U.S. housing market? Neutral. Neutral. It, uh, it's going up in the short run. What it will do in the longer run is uh, hard to say. Maybe it'll go down. I, I'll, I'll register that as a, as a word. People should think of it as a somewhat risky investment with no clear direction over the longer term. Do you think that your view seems more pessimistic than others who have sort of declared the rebound on and, and sort of, you know, full speed ahead? Not as many people who are announcing forecasts think that we're full speed ahead. Okay. The, Pulse, the Zillow Pulsonomic Survey have 105 experts. I think the highest one was way below the recent boom in home prices. So experts do not seem to think, any of them, that we're going back to the same boom. Okay. So then... But the it, rhetoric, the, 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 the cheap talk, yeah, right, you are absolutely right. right. The right. cheap talk is we're off to the races again. Yeah. But people who think about it seriously doubt it. Mm -hmm. So what role in GDP for 2013 will housing play? Is it going to be not a drag but not a real plus? Maybe that's plausible. Okay. Yeah, we, we, incidentally, you have to separate things out. We've been getting more activity in multifamily, mm -hmm. apartment buildings. Uh, and, and so what this means is that there's really two markets. There's a dispersed, detached, single-family home market, right. which I think is more likely to decline, and that's the bulk of our housing. Mm -hmm. The uh, apartment buildings are, because there's a move toward rentals, people seem to be more interested in renting now. So those might do better as so investments. We might, so we might, in fact, be seeing a structural shift that goes beyond the cycle and does it have to do with uh, different social notions of living or is it about still, to some degree, tight mortgage lending standards, the, the move toward more rental housing? Well, it's both. But one thing is this American dream of owning a home in the suburbs with a big lawn, two or three cars in the driveway, <laughs> Uh, and then driving an hour from work to get there. That, that's kind of an American anomaly, and other countries don't, aren't so sold on it. So maybe we're, we'll come back to normal uh, attitudes a little bit. And, you know, we'll still have that model, but right. it won't be as big. And, and perhaps that, that sort of model or that dream, as you said, is, is perhaps less affordable than it would have been in, in a different era as well, which is, obviously influences people's choices. What, yeah. If we can move on to uh, a, a talk about financial markets, uh, and obviously you've written in a, in a different cycle about uh, irrational exuberance in those markets. What do you see now? Some people have said that the financial, especially equities prices, obviously with very easy monetary policy in the United States, but that they seem to be in some ways ahead of the macroeconomic uh, real economy outlook. What's your view? Well, the stock market in the U.S., I have a, a price earnings ratio called CAPE for cyclically adjusted price earnings ratio with a 10-year average of earnings in a denominator. That's kind of high at, at mm -hmm. 22, but it's not super high. You know, it got up to 46 in 2000. At this level, it, uh, my work with John Campbell suggests that it's, st it's still a positive investment. It's still mm -hmm. not a bad investment okay. uh, given, given the fact that other investments are... Fixed income is not doing very well. Right, right, exactly. And, and, and uh, obviously, what we can tell about the prospect for interest rates is that they'll remain very low for, for, the, for the foreseeable future, it looks like, at this point. What about your latest book? Uh, if you could tell us briefly, you talk about finance, but you try to put it, I believe, in, in a more uh, broader societal setting. Right. So finance and the good society is about a, a, what seems almost a contradiction. Our economy seems to thrive on financial activity, but in our traditional ways of viewing things, it looks evil because finance, they're, they're trading against each other, they're keeping secrets, they're aggressive, 
and our you know our religion, our values uh, in, in, incurs, is, involves generosity and kindness, charity. It just seem like opposites. Mm. But I'm trying to put that together. It, 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 the problem is, the financial technology is a powerful technology that advances civilization. It advances our goals. But it, see, it's, it's a technology that was invented, I would say, human engineered around the quirks of human behavior, some of which are selfish. So we, we kind of give free play to these selfish sides, and, but we kind of have to if we want to have a system that works. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm sure it's, a, it's a fascinating thesis. Professor Schiller, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure.